Yo, what's going on, baby? Welcome back to another episode. It's from today's video. Eli Holderstein is going to pit. He's giving me a nice QB1 for the Pitt Panthers. I think this is a great move. He was sitting behind Alabama, sitting behind Jalen Moran with the new coaching staff. I think it was time to get up out of there and get a whole new change of scenery. He was a four-star in the 2023 class, so he was rated highly. He had all, in, in any class he can choose from, and he offered any team to play for, and he chose Alabama. Got to sit behind a guy like Jalen Milrow, who's one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. Decides to move on and go to Pitt, and this is Pitt. They're going on to another transport quarterback. They had Keaton Slovis, Phil Jerkovich. They had these head supporter guys in the past. But they need to go back to a guy that they had, like Kenny Pickett, and have some success. In 2022, they went to a bowl game. They went to New York Six Bowl. They lost to Michigan State. But they had one of the best seasons of recent history. And then last year, stinker. Three and nine on the year. Didn't even make a bowl game. Very, very disappointing. But it starts with the quarterback position. They couldn't get it done mostly on the quarterback position. Now, Yate Yarner, Yarnell came and started the last two games of the year and did a very good job. 67% completion percentage, 472 yards, three touchdowns and one interceptions, and two starts against Boston College and Duke. So he's got to compete against Eli Holderstein in this next coming year. And Eli Holderstein, he did not play at Alabama. He was that backup in, you know, and Alabama's always got the best guys to choose from, the best quarterbacks to choose from in the last couple of years. They've had some dogs at the quarterback position. But his senior year at Zachary High School in Louisiana, 65% college percentage, 2,153 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, and three interceptions. They also can run to 505 rushing yards and nine touchdowns. Pitt is getting a dog. They're getting a really good guy in the ACC it's kind of open this year. It's been more open than in years past. Uh, the quarterback play is not where it has been in the last couple of years. You got Cam Ward in Miami, DJU at Florida State. You have some quality starters in the ACC, but a lot of top dogs have left from last year. Jordan Travis is gone. Drake May is gone. Riley Leonard is gone. So the ACC, they need that guy to emerge from the uh, quarterback position. Some young guy to emerge. They have all the transfer portal guys, all the older, all the older guys. Which one of these young guys can get a step up? I think it could be Eli Holderstein. And I think that 6'4", 240 frame can be a, you know, a, something to be reckoned with in the ACC. Let's get into the schedule though. I think they have a really interesting schedule. They don't play Florida State, but they do have some great matchups in the ACC, in the new ACC, to say the least. Uh, start off with Kent State, start off at Cincinnati for the first two games. They start the year off 2-0, and and then they play West Virginia in the backyard ba brawl. Backyard brawl. Uh, I think this could be a good game. West Virginia, Gary Green coming off one of the best years. Surprising boost for West Virginia last year. I think this could be another classic in the making. Um, not sure who wins that. I don't have an early edge or anything like that. But it's going to be a battle of the trenches. You know, battle of grit and griminess. That's always how the the, the rivalry is. And, and so, I don't know how that game goes. And you have Youngstown State coming in uh, to pit. I think that could be another dub. So they could start the year off 4-0 or 3-1 depending on how it you know, the West Virginia game goes. They have at North Carolina. We have no clue North Carolina is going to look this year. They don't have that, that next guy. I know they have Max Johnson to be the next quarterback. But how is this team going to look in 2024? And then they have Cal, the new ACC opponent. So they could be 4-2, 5-1, 6-0 going into the thick and thin of their, of their ACC schedule. Then they have Syracuse year one under Fran Brown. I think they still could get that W. They have to go to SMU. How is SMU going to look in the new ACC look? I think that could be really well. And I think this could be a trap game for SMU, uh, for Pitt going into SMU. And they have Virginia. And they have Clemson at home. They did it a while ago. They upset it at Clemson. I think Clemson is probably going to be the favorite. But it could be a trap game for Clemson. I think Pitt. Sneaky could upset them, but it's probably going to be Clemson this one. Then you got to go to Louisville, who showed they're one of the best teams in the ACC. The Jeff Brom era at Louisville has been off to a great start. And then they finished with at Boston College. I think this team could make a deep run. But if Eli Holstein is one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC, they could make it to the ACC championship game. I'm very, very excited for this move. Pig gets another transfer portal quarterback. In, in the last couple of years, it hasn't worked out where they thought it would be. But it's still... It's hit or miss. You know, these transfer portal guys are hit or miss. They have all these stars coming out of high school. You never know what it's going to look like. But I think Eli Holderson could really be be that guy for Pitt moving forward. I think this is a great move for Pitt, getting that next guy in the transfer portal. Him and Nate Yarnell are going to battle it out for QB1. It's not going to be it's not gonna be given to anybody. It's not going to be given to Eli Holderson. But I think this could be a really nice, nice 
QB1 battle for a pit. But all I got today's video, comment down below what you guys think of Pitt in 2024, maybe how they did in 2023. Thoughts like Eli Holderstein. Like the video and of course, subscribe to this if I'm all I got for today's video. See you next time. Peace.